Shalom, most high in Christ blessed. This is Captain Ezra. And this is Officer Amasai. And this is another 15 minutes with the captains. And we're going to be dealing with this same series, which is French Check. And this time we're going to be dealing with the role of a husband. The role of a husband. You know, because a lot of brothers don't know their role. They like, I get married, I'm just supposed to come in and bark orders and walk out the room and that's it. And get my feet massaged and got my slave, my, my slave that I got in there. They don't know what they're supposed to do. So we're just going to touch on some scriptures and try to bring that to the forefront. So let's go to Numbers 1538 like we always do. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. After which you used to go a whoring. So these fringes are for us to remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And do them. So let's deal with this. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 5. Matthew 19 and verse 5. This is the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 5. And said... For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Wait, stop there. Point number one, you got to leave father and mother. You want to be married. You can't be married and you live with your mama. She live with her mama or her auntie or y'all live together with her mama in the basement. No, 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 no. Read that again. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother. And shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Now they are one flesh. But guess what this just told him that he got to do? Provide somewhere for y'all to live. You got to do that. That's step one. If you come to us, well, if you're not even able to do that, we don't even want to have a conversation with you about, oh, I'm looking at a sister over there, that sister right there. I like her. Well, you can like her as much as you want over there until you got some way to take care of her. Sit over there and like her in quiet over there. Go ahead. Verse 6. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Mm -hmm. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. So once you get that woman, you made it to the stage, you're able to take care of her. It's been approved. You did everything decently and in order. Now you are one flesh with her. It is like one person. Right? So let's get some more. Let's see what else is in there. Let's go to Sirach. Chapter 42 and verse 10. What else do you have to do as a husband? This is the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 42 and verse 10. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house, and having an husband, lest she should misbehave herself. And when she is married, Lest she should be barren. So you cannot deal with her when when she's not up under your roof. You look up, it's a shame for her to be pregnant and be in her father's house. That's a shame. And you look up and your wife got to go home pregnant to her parents. And you go home to your parents. But that's your wife. It's like, that's a shame. So you have to provide. You have to be able to provide food, shelter, clothing, all of that. You're supposed to be able to provide that for your wife. Now watch this. Let's get, where is that at? I want, I want Sirach chapter 25 and 22. This is the book of Sirach chapter 25 and verse 22. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. So this means that if she got to take care of you, she's going to be angry. So that means you can't say, oh, well, you know, we're not at her parents. we in her house. No, 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 no. It says, read that again. What's going to happen if you move into her house, she got a job, and you play video games all day? 
A woman, if she maintain her husband. If she had to take care of your behind, and you told us, I want the new Jordans. Hey, baby, how much we got in the account? I want the new uh, 2K, uh, whatever, 28 or whatever it is. I want the new uh, Madden football game. Mm. She got to take care of you. What? It's full of anger. She going to be full of anger. Impudence. Impudence. I don't read. Give me the scripture. Give me the the definition of impudence. I don't. I, I, you know, I went to Cooley. I don't know what that means. Impudence. What is that? All right. The definition of impudence, marked by contemptuous or cocky boldness, cocky boldness or mm. disregard of others. So she's gonna be in there cocky in the household. When you walk in, you walk into her house. And you got the nerd telling us I'm the man. She gonna be cocky. What? Right. Negro, your clothes will be outside when right. you come home. She not listening to you. She right. gonna be extremely cocky and insolent. Click that. Let me see what insolent means. Insolent. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> insultingly contemptuous. She's in gonna speech. be insulting and contemptuous in speech. Or conduct. So when she calling you all kind of N words and you broke this, that, blah, blah, blah. Lazy, that's because no good. Lo lazy. I don't know what your mama did to you. Because you coming up in her house and she got to take care of you. So they let you know you cannot, you got to know you be able to take care of her. Or at least bring some stuff to the table and y'all going by a house. But you want to go lay up in her house? This is what you got to be in store for. So this is part of your role as a husband. You got to provide. Go to 1 Timothy 5 and 8. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You have denied the faith if you do not take care of your family. You're not providing for your wife. You're not providing for your children. You are worse than an unbeliever. You got to understand an unbeliever is not going to get the kingdom. An unbeliever is destined for death. You worse than him if you're not doing that as a man, as a husband, as a father. You're not, you're not worthy of being called an infidel. So you less than an infidel. So that's part of what you have to do. You have to provide. Let's go to First Corinthians 14. What else do you have to do? It's, you know, all right, now you provide, you, you provide it. You got a house. You all live together. You got your children there. Everything is good on that front. What else do you got to do? Start at verse 33. This is the book of First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Mm -hmm. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. So you got to make sure your wife is silent. No, I'm good, kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Pick on the part I want. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So guess what you should be doing at home? Teaching your wife. You should be walking through the scriptures, explaining things to her. Listen, this is what this means. I don't care what a sister so-and-so said what you at the church. This is what that means. This is how that works. This law precepts with this law. You teach her. You guide her. So what? What is she going to be able to do? Teach her children when you're gone. So now you at work, she's able to teach them. And she's like, no, that, that, that doesn't mean that. This means this. This is how this works. But you have to be able to build her up. And she has to ask you at home. Y'all work that out away from us. Y'all go figure that out in that house that you provided for. Right? Mm -hmm. So go to 2 Timothy 2.15. So now you have to teach the wife, right? This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Mm-hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have to study to be approved and be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Why? How can you teach your wife if you don't understand it? That means you're not providing what you're supposed to provide as a husband. If you're unable to teach her, you're not doing your full part as a husband. So you have to and you have to study to get there. Right. 
So what's next? Go to First Timothy 3, and I want verse 1. Start there. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. What's that part? Apt to teach. Mm, so you have to have an aptitude for teaching. Come on. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house. You have to know how to rule your own house. Meaning, ruling your house doesn't mean I just come in, like I said earlier, bark orders, slam doors, and do what I say, woman. No, you have to know how to provide what your house needs so it runs smoothly. That's your job. So it may be understanding because it may be an issue that you're having with your wife. Guess what? It may be just something where if you brought out the right understanding, that could correct that versus you coming in and yelling orders and barking. Or it's a situation with the children where she deal with them. Guess what? You came in with an understanding to fix that. Or it could be as simple as the lights is off. You came with the money to pay for the light bill and that fixed that. So guess what? Whatever the situation is, you as a husband should be able to fix it inside of that house. Come on. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. And so the thing about this is that when you come into the, the truth and you understand that the Most High is raising up leaders. Because men, some men like to read this and say that, oh, well, I don't desire the office of, of a bishop. The second the Most High called you, he was trying to put you in the office of a bishop. He said we will be kings and priests. That means we will be leaders. And that's all he's looking for. So if you don't desire to be a leader then you're in the wrong place. You need to go somewhere else. But if you do desire to be one of the children of God, you do desire to be one of the 144,000 men, well, guess what? You need to apply to all, all these things to your life. Read the last part, verse 5. Verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? How can you come in here and be a leader inside of the body and you can't even run your own house? You can't run however many children you got in one wife. How are you going to deal with a whole congregation of women and men and children? You're unable to. So these are the things that you have to correct and get in order when you become a husband. And especially if you plan on being a good husband. So watch this. Let's get this part. Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. So it's like I said, it's not about just coming in and, you know, you get a lot of young people, they get married and or they come in the truth already and the brother might have a spirit where he like, yeah, I'm, I'm about these laws and I see these scriptures and women submit, submit, submit. And they see that and they want to take that home and just yell out all the submit scriptures. It's like, wait a minute, you, you got to get things in order and understand it first. Read this. This is the book of First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So wait a minute. Watch this. Give me the definition of honor. Let's see what that is. Just get it in the regular Google. Let me see the definition of honor. All right. Let's see. Read this one says honor high respect great esteem you have to give high respect and great esteem to that wife read read some of these synonyms down here synonyms distinction mm -hmm. privilege glory tribute kudos expand that i want to see some more so you have to give tribute to your well not tribute you have to give kudos to your wife you got to give prestige to her good morning Cachette, prestige, fame, renown, merit, credit, importance. This is one I see that I, can't, I want to get to. Keep going. Notability. I want that one he got it, the, the mouse on. Respect. What's that one again? Respect. You have to give this to your wife. You have to be able to give her some of that Aretha Franklin, some mm -hmm. of that R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That's right. You know, the sister be playing that at home. <laughs> 
He come home after work. That's why. Well, that's always playing. Nah, I, yeah, he come home and turn it off and put it's something like, else on. Put this on. Turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> but that's playing every day when he come home. He can hear it outside. But you have to be able to give her some respect. You got to be able to honor that woman. So, and and the thing is, you got to understand is you became one flesh with her, which we about to get it. Get to, go to Ephesians. Let's just read it. You became one flesh with this woman. What does that mean? Let's let's get it out of the Bible. Ephesians 5:33. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So, as a husband, you're supposed to love your wife as yourself. I have, I'm telling you, I've been looking. I have yet to see a man call himself stupid for the way he cooked some food. I have yet to see a man cuss himself out because the way he did something or didn't do something. I ain't seen a man beating on himself yet. And he getting a domestic abuse char charge because he beat himself up. I have not seen that. So, again, you're supposed to love her as yourself. If you don't do it to yourself, you should not be doing it to her. Meaning, also... You take care of men. I see men, they take care of themselves well. They go to get a haircut every week. They at the barber shop, fresh Jordans on or whatever. I don't know what people wear. But whatever it is, he got it. And then you look and he don't do and take care of his wife the same way. She in rags and she got to figure all this other stuff out to try to get clothes. Right. Getting stuff from hand-me-downs from other people. But you go shopping every week for yourself. No, you need to take care of her like you take care of you. So now, go up, read up. I want you to go to verse 25. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you have to be able to love your wife and give yourself for it. When it says give your, Christ gave himself for the church, he died for the church. You got to be willing to put your life on the line for that woman. That's your role as a husband. You got to have your, you got to be at the moment's notice. If somebody come up and they trying to harm your family, right then you shouldn't be. Look up and all you see is the bottom of your gym shoes come turning the corner. You should be trying to take on whoever's trying to attack y'all so she can have her gym shoes turned in the corner. Right. Just you have to take that on as a husband. Read on. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Come on. So what men to love their wives as their own bodies. You got to love your wife like it's your own body. That's why I said before about, you don't see, I, I, don't, I don't know anybody that has a domestic case against themselves. Right. I have not seen that yet. Police then came and arrested you for what you're doing to you. I've never seen it. Come on. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. When you love your wife, it's just like loving yourself. Why? Because you are one flesh. So you got to remember that in your daily walk. You got to remember that when you putting your shirt on that your wife fringed up for you. Mm. When you putting that shirt on that your wife fringed up for you, remember it's a fringe on there that's letting you know that that woman is the other part of you, and in certain ways, you got to deal with her and treat her. So we're going to end it on that note, and with that, we'll say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.